All hands on deck at the European Commission's Institute for Transuranium Elements. The atomic detectives have a new case to solve. Uh, there was a seizure of a uranium pellet with some packing material which was, was taken to ITU and in, the analytical plan contains all, say, the typical elements of electron microscopy, SIMS and the chemical analysis. Whenever nuclear material is intercepted inside Europe or at its borders, the competent authorities can trust the ITU forensic scientists to find answers to the most puzzling questions. Where does the material come from? When and how was it produced? And what could be its intended use? Klaus Mayer leads the atomic detectives. In order to answer these questions, we can do a number of investigations to provide hints to the authorities for their investigative work. And these hints we get from the material itself, because the material contains traces of the production process traces of the original material used, traces of all the manipulations exposed to the material. Adrian Nichols begins his investigations. So I see we have some forensic evidence on this sample. We have a fingerprint on the lid. We will take a photograph of this and send it to the police where they will run it against their data bank. So far, atomic detectives have supported police investigations in some 30 cases. The next step in our investigation of this seized material would be to take it for destructive analysis. So we take a closer look at the material, we take subsamples, and some of the subsample will be dissolved, and then we do different uh, types of analysis with it, uh, which give us information on the chemical composition of the material, on the isotopic composition of the major constituents, on chemical impurities contained, and on other radionuclides possibly contained in that sample. Atomic detectives have 24 hours to deliver a first guess. The next clue comes from Bert Kramer. So this is an SEM, a scanning electron microscope. Here the sample surfaces are scanned. We try to find out the morphology of the sample by visually enlarging and then photographing it. And we can also determine the chemical composition of the sample. The particle size is 8 micrometers. The next step, investigating the sample with a unique instrument, the SIMS. The packaging that surrounded the seized material will tell Magnus Hedberg more about its intended use. The sample is ready. Oh, thank you. Now, this instrument can detect particles down to a few hundred nanometers. And fully automated measurements can search through some 20, 30 million particles to find the exact location and the enrichment of the individual particles. And this information works as a an isotopic fingerprint that helps us understand what the intended use is for the material. For instance, typical uh, fuel material has an enrichment of 3 to 5 percent. When the enrichment comes up to 80 percent and above, we refer to it as weapon grade material. Unsurprisingly, the SIMS analysis becomes crucial evidence if the case goes to court. Now it's the turn of Terry Wies and Arne Janssen to characterize the sample with their transmission electron microscope. Arne, here we have a sample for a forensic analysis. So I would ask you to make a edX yields analysis. And we need also to perform some microstructural investigation. Yes, we can analyze it now. Very, perfect, thank you. This instrument is uh, quite unique uh, worldwide, and this especially because of this glove box, which has been installed in the colon of the microscope. This allows the examination of radioactive samples, and especially plutonium uh, contaminated samples. Uh, this uh, technique is especially relevant if one wants to establish the microstructure of samples, and uh, is used by uh, atomic detectives in order to determine the fine microstructure of samples. This microstructure cannot be changed until you reprocess the sample, and uh, hence uh, provides a very specific signature of an element 
or on the way it has been fabricated. And Nuclear forensics is a highly sophisticated methodology available in only a few specialized laboratories across the world. ITU is recognized around the globe for its efficiency. Okay, folks, so what have we found? So from the length and the external diameter, but also from the inner diameter of the central wall, this points to a RBMK fuel pellet. Adrian, the enrichment, what does it tell us? From mass spectrometry, we found an enrichment of 1.8% uranium-235. And with regard to plutonium, we found that it was actually lower than the detection limit. Okay, production date uh, was in the early 1990s, 1992 plus minus one year. From the microscopy, is the grain size and the structure is very typical for a nuclear material. And what did you find on the outer package as particles, Magnus? Well, it's quite interesting. We found mainly three different types of material. One is a low enriched uranium, which has a composition different from the pellet. But then we found also more exotic materials, like 96% enriched material, which is used in research reactors. So bottom line is, we're looking for a place which produces RBMK fuel pellets, which was in operation for sure in the early 1990s, and which at the same time produces naval reactor fuel and research reactor fuel. RBMK pellets, there are two places in the world which produce this fuel. There is only one place which produces also this one. And uh, I think we have identified the facility with that. Case solved. Atomic detectives are ready for a new mission. And they always decide to accept it.